Harry S. Truman sworn in as 33rd president of the good old U.S. of A. Death of a Salesman and this one really close to home first network television broadcast to take place as KDKA TV in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The year is 1949 and this Cadillac Series 62 special could be had at your local Cadillac showroom, but... Before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that covers the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and frankly, cars that are being forgotten. We talk history, specs, and design of these rolling works of art. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. For those that don't know, we have Engine Episode Wednesdays where we take engines from cars, talk about the history, overview of those particular engine families. This Wednesday, or possibly Thursday, it's going to be first generation AMC V8. We're going to talk about one of the most overlooked, underrated engines of the 1950s, if not ever, the legendary AMC 327. That's coming Wednesday or Thursday. Also, this 1949 Cadillac Series 60 Special Body by Fleetwood is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, located Morgantown, Pennsylvania. They have over 875 cars for sale. Anybody can go there. It doesn't cost anything to get in. For more information, pricing, and pictures pertaining to this very car, be sure to click the link below after the show 1949 cadillac model lineup you had the series 60 special fleetwood followed by the series 61 followed by the series 62 and then you had the series 75 at the top cadillac would offer the series 60 special from 1938 through 1942 world war ii happened 46 through 76, they took a bit of a break. They came back in 1987 to 1993 in 11 generations. 1949 falls in the third generation, which was produced for only two years, 1948 and 49, designed by Duke, 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 Harley Earl and Bill Mitchell, built on the GMC body platform. Series 60 Special could only be had as a four-door sedan. Side note, Cadillac made four custom Cadillac models for the New York Auto Show. Three of them used the 60 Special body. The Coupe de Ville was born, which was a pillarless hardtop. Just look at that top. This might be Genesis for the hardtop bodied car. Can you guys think of a car that came before this that had a hard top? In the comment section below, this top also looks very similar to the Bel Air hard top that comes a few years later. 49 Cadillac is more or less a carryover design that started in 48. So let's compare 47 on top, 49 on the bottom. But before we do, this has always been one of my favorite Cadillac designs. The lines, they're just so clean. Just look at this fastback. The fastback, I totally dig. Anyway, 47 on top, 49 on the bottom, starting in the front. And I apologize for the film grain on the 49. Just look at how different these are. Just about everything is different. So let's talk about the similarities. Both have single headlights, V-badging on the nose, flying ladies, split windshields. The 49 was the last year for the split windshield. Goes to single piece in 1950. I just love the styling of the 48 and 49. Not to say that the d design of the 47 is bad. It's just really cleaned up. The bumpers are different. Front fascia, the grill section has two rows of bars on the 49 versus four rows of bars on the 47. The nose isn't as tall on the 49. Turn signals are in the same location, but are smaller on the 49. Moving to the side profile, different bumper profiles wrapping around to the overhang just in front of the front wheel wells. Just take a look at the front wheel well design they look the same and yet the fenders designs are completely different the roof looks very similar between both of these cars both having front and rear vent windows the rear fenders are different look at how different the rocker molding is moving to the rear both have three-piece rear glass. The 49 is sporting fins, whereas the rear of the 47 looks more rounded. 
Trunk profiles are also different moving inside. Two completely different dash layout designs. Which one do you like better in the comment section below? Let's talk specs. 226 inches long, 78 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 133 inches. It weighs 4,130 pounds. Price, $3,830, which is equivalent to you spending $49,193.13 in the year 2023. Total 1949 Cadillac production was 92,554 units of which Total Series 60 Special Body by Fleetwood was 11,399 units. Moving on to engine, but before we do, 1949 was a huge year for Cadillac. With the introduction of their very own overhead valve, V8 being released alongside the Olds rocket engine. Cadillac featured shaft mounted rocker arms, lighter skirtless block. Oiling system used central cast in passage between lifter galleries, feeding oil to the cam and crank by grooves machined in the cam bores. 331 cubic inch displacement, overhead valve, V8, 5.4 liters. It was good for 160 horsepower, 3,800 RPM. 312 pound-feet of torque at 1,800 RPM with a bore of 3.8 inches and a stroke of 3.6 inches. Compression was 725 to 1, featured five main bearings. Built of cast iron, pistons were aluminum alloy, slipper type. Could be backed with either a three-speed manual or four-speed automatic hydromatic. When equipped with a three-speed manual, zero to 60 could be had in 13.1 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 98 miles per hour. Average fuel consumption, 11.6 miles to the gallon. And these are all baseline numbers. You could get better than these numbers. You could get worse than these numbers. Just a jumping off point, if you have one of these cars and it's running a little too rich and you're not getting that, that is what these numbers are for. Let's talk chassis. Front suspension, independent knee action with coil springs in the front. The rear, semi-elliptical leaf springs. Brakes, it uses four-wheel hydraulic Drum brakes, steering gear, recirculating ball, 25.6 to one. The frame is a rigid X frame, reinforced side members with deep X member junction. Let's talk styling. Just look at all of the bright work on this beautiful car. And I'm gonna say something that's a little controversial. Look back over here from far away you can't really tell that this is a Cadillac. It kind of sort of looks like a Chrysler in a lot of ways. It's not a bad thing. It just looks very understated for a Cadillac. But there is a lot of bright work going on in this design. Running lights and or turn signals. Just look at how this bumper wraps around. And this isn't even the bumper, this is above the bumper. It wraps around further than the bumper does. Look at the bumper in relationship to this piece. Nice big wide bezels around the headlights. This looks like stainless. I love these bumper overriders and or bumperettes. They're huge, but not only that, they got like little fins. How cool. Beautiful Packard V8 badge right there on the nose of the car. I love how this is all pushed up in the center. There's also an ever so slight center line going up to this lady. And then it runs to the windshield. But just look at all the lines going on in the hood design itself. And coming down the side, there's a better look at this. But notice it doesn't go all the way to the wheel well, it stops. There's about a quarter of an inch there. There's probably about an inch and a half here. The wheel wells aren't flared. There isn't a bead, it's just a wheel well. There's also this line that comes off the headlight and runs 
I was going to say it runs the belt line of the car, but it doesn't. It just runs the belt line of this fender, and it stops right here. The rest of it is smooth. There is nice bright work down here, rocker molding. Nice Cadillac badge script there. Antenna is on the driver's side. This has suicide wipers or wipers that are unopposed. Split windshield. Look at the side mirror placement. It's mounted on the A-pillar. This car does have drip rails. Runs the length of the car. Look at all of the stainless inside the windows. Look at this gravel guard. This car also has a fender bulge and fender skirts. Look at this bright work. So it starts out thin, then it gets thicker as it goes out the back of the car. This car also has fins. So look at this fin profile. In the comments, what car do these fins look like? They definitely copied this fin. To me, I see Willis Arrow, but they copied this, this fin because this is the very first one. Just look at how these bumpers are designed. Huge overriders in the back as well. These ones don't have fins like the ones do in the front. License plate bracket and massive license plate light. These look like backup lights. This has a three piece back glass. The gas filler cap, that's interesting. So you push a button push this button and this opens and that is where the gas filler cap is located just look at how it's designed it has this thing on top so you can turn it easily and get it out of there the one on this side doesn't open it's just mimicked to look like this one but doesn't have any functionality Getting inside the trunk. The trunk lid isn't that heavy, but I think it's counterbalanced with something. But just take a look at the inside of this trunk lid. Also, check out how big this trunk is. The load floor is nice and low, so you could just literally just put stuff in there. There's enough space in this trunk for a full-size spare, bias ply spare, of course, with a bumper jack off to the side. You could get a couple bodies in here, no problem, if that's what you want to use this car for. I don't judge. Getting inside, but before we do, look at how this door handle is designed. Notice it protrudes at the top here. I wonder if it does that on, yeah, and it does it on the bottom. So that's different. This door is all framed out. Here are my fingers for reference. It's only a couple inches. Here is what the door panel looks like. It doesn't feel like mohair. I don't know what material it feels like. It, it's not a rich feeling. It's, it's kind of weird for a Cadillac. Door lock, armrest, door handle. This car has buttons for the power windows, which are hydraulically controlled crank vent window which make sure it's unlocked up here first look at how this door panel is designed notice how much thicker the material is here and it curves so it meets up with this coming down inside the pedal box high beam switch there is no clutch brake pedal gas pedal steering wheel column right there Hood release, emergency brake, and or handbrake. brake. 
So something else that's weird that I just found out upon further examination, these are both hollow, but this car doesn't have AC. So why would they hollow it out like that and make it connect? It's, it's, it's very interesting. Oh, wow. What a quality, quality sounding shot. That's like the best door slam that I've done in a while. I'll do that again. Oh, it, it definitely doesn't sound like that when I shut the doors of the Prius. But just look at how this connects. That's really cool. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. I love the visibility in this thing. It's nice and airy, and you'll see that when we get to the greenhouse. I'm just really blown away by that. This car has always been one of those cars that's always been like, what is that one like? And the visibility out the front windshield is great. One of the best views of any car from this period. The the glass is just so huge. I don't know if I can really represent how big it is. It's just, it's really nice to look out of. Underneath the steering wheel. Also, look at this steering wheel. Look at how massive it is. I love the colors. I love the, I don't know if you would call this ivory. It's a very, very nice color. I absolutely love it. Underneath the steering wheel, there's tons of room to put my hand in between my lap and the steering wheel. The only reason I show that is because if you're driving down the road and the steering wheel's in your lap, it doesn't feel that great after a while, especially if you have to slam on brakes and you, and you go into the steering wheel. If you don't fit in the car, it's not a good driving experience. On then to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right, headlights, gasoline gauge, coolant temperature gauge, speedometer with odometer inside of it, flanked by turn signal indicators, tripometer, amp meter, oil pressure, heat direction for upper and lower vents, radio, clock, handbrake, wipers and wash feature, next to which I'm not sure, drive modes read, neutral, drive, low, reverse, starter button, key, lighter. Up above, there are sun visors and they're, they're on the big side. Like there's my hand for reference. There's a daytime, nighttime rear view mirror here. Which that has to be a pretty rare feature for 1949. Over here, another sun visor for the passenger. This is what I look like sitting in the front seat. And I get it. There's tons of headroom because people wore top hats. Ladies wore sun hats. But you don't feel claustrophobic in this car at all because of how much headspace there is. Let's talk about the seats. The... The seats are made out of this really interesting material. I don't know what it is. It doesn't feel like broadcloth. The seating profile, the position in which the seat is, very, very comfortable in this car. It's one of the most comfortable 50s cars, early 50s cars I've ever been in. Here is my knee situation to the dashboard. It's a non-issue. It's awesome in this car. On to the glove box test. There's our test subject. Here is my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. Just look at that. No problem at all. And it shuts. Coming to the rear door. Just look at how much thicker this door is. Also where the cutout is for the wheel well and how it is over here. Look at this big pad. I guess it's not really that big. Here's my hand for reference. So this door doesn't have an armrest. It does have rear vent windows though. And you unlock it like that, and then you can crank it open. And I think any car that has vent windows in the back is just pure class. So classy. Door handle to get out. Window for the big window and it's an electric window. Here is what the rear looks like. Look at how much space you have back here. 
Also, it does have armrests. They're just not on the doors. Watch this. If you time it right, it will shut itself. Just like a Tesla. Here is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio. And that's what visibility looks like out the rear from the back seat. There is a parcel shelf. Notice three piece back glass. All right, let's talk seating profile back here. The seat back does sit rather upright and it does dip down in the back, but it isn't uncomfortable per se because you have all the room in the world like look it's raked the floor is raked you can't see it but it, there's an elevation here as like a footrest tons of knee space it's not not an issue robe rail you could put a thick blanket on this to keep warm in the winter time because the heating systems weren't that great and they were generally down there, but this one doesn't even really look like it has a heater. It might be in the center there. There is an ashtray right here, as well as cigarette lighter. This car does have an armrest as well. Operates like that. There is a center light, dome light in the center. Notice it's vertical and the switch to operate it is right here. armrest coat hook on both sides there's armrest on both sides as well coming to the under the hood section we've already released it from the inside the other catch is right inside here oh man the hood is super heavy it latches onto here but you have to push it up quite a ways for it to go So just look at that beautiful Cadillac overhead valve, V8, sitting, sits way back inside here. Just look at all this. And the radiator sits right here. It's crazy, it's almost like mid-engine. From the front. It's got oil bath air cleaner. This one has the windshield washer fluid in the jar. Generator. This is all the heating, pipe work, ventilation. Oh, that one's for ventilation. This one has the heater on it. I'm not used to seeing the heater box on this side. It's got the oil filtration on the outside of the block. On the positive side, timeless design, V8 power, adjustable front seat, hydraulic windows, big, spacious, both front and rear, great visibility out of the huge front windshield. And I was trying to think back at a car that this reminded me of when sitting in it, and I couldn't think of one, but I thought of one since then, 1953 Kaiser Manhattan. This has very much the same feel huge glove box full instrumentation against it it is a big heavy and thirsty car the seat material wasn't up to the par of the car in my opinion all right now it's time for would you rather two scenarios today in the first scenario would you rather have a 1949 packard or 1949 cadillac or 1949 lincoln i'm gonna leave this here for a minute if you need more time feel free pause the video now moving on to the second scenario, a bit different, money, no object. Would you rather have a 1949 Buick sedan net or 1949 Cadillac sedan net or 1949 Oldsmobile sedan net? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. Just admire it. Just take it all in. One of the most sexiest body designs ever in my opinion. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. 
I had to throw you one completely out of left field. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. Check out our Facebook group, which I call The After Party. It gives you the opportunity to share your rides, stories, experiences, and pictures. It's kind of sort of like a community bulletin board, but way more than that. If you'd like to check it out, Link will be in the description. If you don't have Facebook and would like to reach me, talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, whatever, send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, toodaloo! And the funny thing is, you're only 16, but you're my teenage queen. Oh, my, my queen. You're the prettiest, loveliest girl. I've ever seen. I've ever seen.